you wrote an open letter. Yes. To the industry. What, it wasn't supposed to be open. Open. It, it, it started off anonymous. No, it wasn't and even supposed to go to the industry. It wasn't supposed to go to nobody. It was written for. It was written to the CEO, one who's my friend. Okay. I wrote it to him. So, can you number one for our, for our audience who's now hearing your story and understanding you as a human being? Exactly. Can, can, can you talk to us, number one? What was this letter? What was the intent of it? How did it well, well, go viral? And why did you decide to eventually put your name and a face to it? Okay, so so I wrote the letter because, so basically the George Floyd thing was happening. And like I said, it goes back to guys like you and myself. We're numb to that shit. Like, that wasn't shocking to me. That wasn't heartbreaking to me. That wasn't like, oh my God, why are they doing us like that? Nigga, that was every day of our life to me, right? So now white people all of a sudden are traumatized by our trauma that we live with every day. So it's like, so they would do these calls, company-wide calls and just ask the black people on the call, are you guys okay? Are you guys dealing with anything? We just want you guys to know that if you want to call us or talk, this is your moment. Now, mind you, I live in Atlanta. I'm the only person, well, I'm not the only person. I'm, uh, my boy lives here, he's head of uh, Urban Radio, but I live in Atlanta. So I, I kind of like dog, I, my house is 14,000 square feet. And then up the block, eight houses down, my mom's house is 7,000 square feet with a guest house and a pool house and a pool and a full court basketball court. I'm living great in Atlanta. So I don't really have, I'm not really fighting the, I'm not really emotionally charged by this moment. It's just like, man, I'm good, man. But I see my friend trying to be a friend to the company. And I'm listening and I'm like, he's like, anyone who want to talk, say something. And in my mind, I'm thinking, nobody's going to say something. Like, this is our way out, man. We can't afford to fuck that up by being having an emotional moment that we know that you might charge us with later. You know what I'm trying to say? So in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna write him a letter because he's also my friend and I don't want him to feel like I'm attacking him. So let me organize my thoughts. Okay, so just, just for clarity, this is a yeah. white man. Yes, this is a white guy. One of my closest friends, he's a great it, guy. Yep, and, and, and hold on because it, we, we need to establish, like I said, I jumped yeah, over part of your of story. Let's go, let's go, wait, I'm with wait. you. What is your title at this moment? Because you have a lot to lose. So I exactly. want you to understand, you're not anybody's assistant at this moment. No. You're not. I'm seeing, vice, I'm seeing vice president. I'm seeing vice president of a and There you go. And, and, and he's a CEO, but we've been friends for a long time. And I wanted to write the letter to him and his counterpart, Tom, COO. I want to just write them a letter because I wanted them to see, this is what we see. So when you ask us to talk, this is why we're not gonna talk. And I wrote it to them. That letter was written to them. Then before I sent it, I'm like, let me hit a couple of people that I respect, my color at the company asked and let them read the letter. How long and was the letter? Uh, the letter was, uh, it was probably like, it was just an email. So it's probably maybe like, it, it, whatever, however long it is, it's like a page of, uh, it's like the, the page on it, it was pretty much that. Right? And is, is, is the letter just helping? It was, it, was just for, it was just for them to understand. It was really for them. It was really for me to show them, first of all, why we're not responding. So to show them that you guys are wasting meaning, time. Meaning black and brown people. Yeah, show them why black and brown people are not responding and, and saying, this is why we're not gonna respond because this is what we're taught. And if you guys wanna know how to change things, here's the start. Just, it was for two people's eyes, but I sent it to two people at my company and one of the guys ripped it apart, a black guy. You know, he just ripped it apart. He was like, what does this have to do with George Floyd? This has nothing to do with him. Like, why would you write this letter? You misspelled this word here. You misspelled this word. It was like, in my mind, I'm thinking like, nigga, 
nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, and it was one of the things where I'm like, I'm like an emotional guy. You can see from talking to me. I like live in a place of like, we gonna go. I'm like fucking a coach of uh, and fucking a, a movie. Like nigga, we're gonna go to the top. I'm that kind of guy. So when I did that was my to the part, I was like dumbfounded. Like bro, I couldn't sleep because he responded to me like one o'clock in the morning because he's on West Coast time. I couldn't sleep, and he was like, and he was saying stuff like, you know, like. You know, like this guy, like this has nothing to do with George Floyd and black people are getting opportunities. This is wrong. So I was like, so. And obviously, now, obviously he is senior level and somebody he, you consider he, he, a friend he, he, because he's he is, one of high, he, is high, he is high level. He's high level. He's someone that I, I fuck with. And he's someone who I respect. And he's higher level than me. And so now at this moment, I call my friends in the industry. because so I'm calling my friends, because like I said, I could not sleep. And I'm one of them guys where, like I said, my trauma, I can't, I'm not putting it on nobody, it's my trauma, I own it. Now I'm like, man, he might show this to them. Man, I shouldn't have sent that shit. Oh man, I fuck. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you, like it's like you just made me think about it. I'm about to fuck up my good thing. Like I'm about to fuck up my good, I didn't even need to write the letter. I'm writing a letter for y'all. <laughs> That's, I'm like, this wasn't for me. This was for y'all. But he, so now I hit a couple friends and I was like, man, I wrote this letter, man. Cause mind you, this is, this is full quarantine moment. So, you know, everybody's on Zoom calls, everybody's talking and I'm hitting a, I'm hitting a couple of my friends and I'm like, yo man, I wrote this letter. And mind you, you talking about like four or five in the morning, by the way, like man, I wrote this letter. Man, I just want to tell me my tripping. So I sent it to one of my friends. I'm a, a good friend of mine. I sent it to him at like five in the morning. He liked the picture on Instagram, nigga. He liked the picture on Instagram and I knew he was up. So I called him like, hey man, I know you up, man. I don't mean to bother you. I know it's five, it's three in the morning on the West Coast, six morning on the East Coast, but I wrote a letter, I need you to read it and get back to me tonight. He said, send it. So I sent it to him. He called me back like six minutes later, five minutes later. Ray, that was incredible. What are you doing with that? I said, nothing now. I said, I, I just, you know, I sent it to a couple people at my job and they said it was, it wasn't, it's, it's, it's not needed. He said, man, fuck them. You need to do something with this. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Cause I, I, I one guy made me feel like I'm making, starting trouble and you're telling me I'm not. So he was like, man, just give me a chance. I'm gonna tell you tomorrow. And I sent it to a white friend of mine, Wendy Day. I'll say her name. I sent it to Wendy Day and she called me at six in the morning. Ray, this is fucking incredible. You're a black man, don't be afraid. You know, white people, they got more, they, they don't have the fear we have. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid, we're gonna, I'll stand with you and march with you. I'm like, I don't wanna march, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, like I'm doing, I'm doing good for myself. This is, this is for everybody else. So anyway, so now fast forward. Now I told you, it's nine o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call from that same guy, my boy, at nine o'clock in the morning, three hours later. Ray, I sent this to like five or six people. They all want to talk to you. Wow. What? One person said, it needs to, he, one person asked me, is it okay to send a billboard? And I was like, what the fuck you think? Cause mind you, this, mind you, here we go now. My superior at Warner told me, you fucking up. So now he's like, I want to send this to, I want to send this out. So my boy, one of the most, if you name three, four most powerful black positions, I want to say this guy is probably number two in the business. He calls me and talks to me for an hour and a half. Now, mind you, he is powerful as fuck. He has like a billion dollars a year in the budget. So he calls me, he's like, Ray, I've been in this game for fucking almost 20 years and I've never seen somebody put into words how I felt being a black man in this shit. He said, I sent this to the girl from Billboard. You need to publish this. So I'm like, bro, like, man, I'm, I might get fucked up over here. Like, I don't know what to do. It was like, I don't, I don't, you, it's bigger than you at this moment. It's bigger than you. Okay, cool. So the lady from Billboard hits me and she was like, no, nah, this is a white woman. She's like, you described how I feel as a white woman in this. Oh, like, wow. This is how I feel as a white woman. I know how hard it is for you. And this is hard for me too. I'm gonna publish this. 
do you want to put your name on it? And at this point, mind you, I've talked to like 15 powerful people in the industry that was all read the letter that was like, nigga, put it out. If somebody fuck with you, and then only thing I changed in the letter, Big John, Big John Platt called me and he said, change everything from I to we, because you're now speaking for all of us now. Everything goes from I to we. That's the only thing you change. And if anybody say anything to you, tell them to come talk to Big John. Put it out. At that moment, I'm calling lady for Billboard. She's like, you want to put your name on it? I said, I don't mind. What you think? She said, no, I got to protect you. you. You can't put your name on this for right now. So I'm like, cool. I ain't never been in Billboard before. Like, shit, I live in Atlanta. Nigga, I'm in Wakanda, nigga. You got to come send an army of people out here to go. You got to go through army of people to get to me. So she puts it out and anonymous and it goes fucking viral. I'm seeing everybody. And at this moment, I'm getting texts from black people. I heard it was you, thank you. Thank you. Lawyers, yo, thank you. LA Reed and me spoke. He was like, yo, that would needed to be said. So now white people are looking for me now. <laughs> so now I got white people looking for me like, so my boys will call me like, yo, this lawyer wants to talk to you. Yo, this exec wants to talk to you. They know, they, they don't know it's you, but they want to all talk to the guy that wrote this. <laughs> so I was like, okay, if you, I guess so. So uh, Dina LaPote, lawyer, calls me. She said, Ray, I've talked to 10 of my friends today and a couple of them was crying because this is how important, this is how your letter made them feel. You need to put your name on it because other people are not going to respect it without the right name. I'm gonna call Tom Corson myself. So that she called Tom and they were supportive. Like, shit, we wish Ray would have sent it to us. Goes back to, this is why we need people that are unafraid and people that see bigger than their self because the only reason why the letter got out was because somebody told me not to give it to you. Now you're telling me, why didn't you give it to me? Because you got the wrong black people in power because their concern is how your comfort and my concern is our comfort. Correct. Your comfort is not my concern. You are in power. You are, you control the comfort level for everyone. Why the hell am I worried about your comfort? Like if you are a real leader, like I, I'm a leader. I want to know the people that's behind me. If they see some shit coming or they heard some shit, they need to tell me. Don't be afraid. I don't care if you're an intern that started yesterday. You could come to my office and tell me something. I'm not never going to be that big. I'm not gonna ever get that big. I wanna always be the guy that wants to know when that we about to hit the fucking iceberg in the Titanic. I wanna be that guy. So, you know, it came out and then it was funny because I didn't see it from white people's perspective because I didn't care. It was more like, you just need to understand what we thought, what we see. And then I had white friends calling me like, I just want you to know that I'm glad it was you that wrote it. Because when oh, I first so read the letter, when I first read the letter, I didn't respect it because I didn't know, I couldn't respect someone criticizing me without knowing how hard that person worked. And when I found out it was you, I knew that it was true because I've seen you come up and I've always seen you be an integrity, a guy, integral guy, a guy who cares about people in the room. So I had to read the letter again and I accept, I read it from a different perspective and I just want to know that I'm going to make changes now. because. Of it. So at that moment, I was just like, Shit, it hit home. But like I said, for me, it was, I live in Atlanta, bro. Like I just was like, I forgot about it. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like I, I forgot about it. And then I would get on the phone with white people. They'd be like, man, Ray, how you doing? By the way, thanks for the letter. <laughs> oh, you wanna know something, Ray? Number one, for anybody who hasn't read the letter, I will be dropping this in the link. So feel free to scroll down below, look in the description and, click on this letter. It is an extremely powerful, well thought out, uh, introspective letter of what it's like to be a person of color working within the music industry. But I think that it applies to industries all over the world. It, 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 it was. It, yeah, it, it is. It should not be segmented to one industry because you really did pull from a place of experience and not just experience uh, in terms of work experience. Yes. Experience 
of what we're taught from the day we come into this world. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.